on this episode of Live to Farm. We're doing my favorite job on the whole farm. It's tow time, woohoo! Without it, none of us can survive. Let's go check out the equipment we're gonna use. Today we're gonna do some fertigating. This is a farm we call the Big Pivot because it's got a big pivot in it. So I got notes here from what I've applied previously and just kind of how fast to run the pivot, I guess. Right now I'm gonna put five gallon an acre on. I'm gonna run a pivot pretty fast because I'm really not worried about the water or getting a lot of water on. I'm just focused on getting the, the fertilizer on. Put my five gallon an acre on and then I'll water it just with water back to kind of water that in. Yeah, this this is our miracle. I mean, that's basically what it is. This is our miracle grow. We need a miracle to get good corn out here. <laughs> so yeah, we just hook this up to the tank. Turn it on. So this is our supply line to the pump. These are agri-inject pumps, which are, in my opinion, the best you can get. And you can control the speed. And this is 110 gallon an hour um, wide open. So that's what we're doing. We're putting 110 gallon an hour on. So and then it's injected through this smaller line, three quarter inch line into the water. This, this pump will pump 1500 gallon a minute. And this well is 78 feet deep is all the deeper it is to supply 1500 gallon a minute. So we're blessed with plenty of water. We got a great aquifer. Yes, on a dry year, you know, our water table will go down, but we've never had an issue. This is a new well. You can tell we got new concrete around it. The old one is right here in front of it. And it's such an old well, the casing's concrete kind of got ironed up and started getting restricted. So that's why we drilled a new well. You know, a pivot, the end moves five times as far as the center. So every nozzle is orf orfused down. It's down so low, that's why these get choked up here. Guys that don't have irrigations, they always give us heck. They say, boy, it must be nice. You push a button, you got rain. Yeah, we're very fortunate to have water here. Don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of management to them. Just like the nozzles, we had to unchoke the nozzles. This well here actually feeds two other systems. So we're always opening valves, shutting valves. In dry weather, it's nonstop. It's one guy going around. We got around 20 pivots. It's a full-time job just going around and keeping those moving. And especially when we got fertigating going on with it, you're hauling tanks around and pumps around. There's always a flat tire, a gearbox out. Lightning is horrible with these things. You know, it, it's most ours are electric. It's another tool that we're very fortunate to have, but there's so much management with it. I enjoy it. I, I really do. Don't get me wrong. When it harvests is here and irrigation season's over with, I'm relieved. It, it is another one of my favorite things to do is run these irrigation. like a farmer. Get an agri-road hat, Cardinal Farm shirt, some boots that Nikki bought off Facebook for me. Pair of jeans. Tell uh, them what hat you got on. Barry Farms hat. Buddy mine I went to college with. Barry Farms. People my dad went to college with. Cardinal Farm shirt, pair of blue jeans, and some twisted X's or boots. And wings. Gotta have the hair coming out of the hat. In order to dress like a farmer, he's usually wearing a hat from one of his sponsors or uh, maybe it's the corn that he grew. And then usually some kind of shirt if they have a logo. And in my case, I don't wear blue jeans, but I usually wear khakis because I like those they are more comfortable to me than blue jeans. But a lot of farmers wear blue jeans. And usually you'll have some kind of a, a belt. And then generally you're gonna wear some kind of a work shoe. I wouldn't want to be out here in tennis shoes. It'll poke it right through the side of it or something. So they have to change clothes every day, maybe even twice a day, sometimes. Used to, it seemed like we kind of dress like homeless farmers sometimes, but now we got uniforms, so now we're professional farmers. Chelsea likes it better, she doesn't have to do as much laundry. Joe Monty took me up today because my other, my Cardinals hat was looking pretty nasty. Get you a good pair of comfortable boots. These jeans come with the uniform. That's how you dress like a professional farmer. Hey 
guys, welcome to Cardinal Farms. I'm here with my friends Joe with Soil Max and Michael with ADS. Harvest is over, maintenance time's coming, but one of the biggest management practices we do anymore is tiling. Sandy ground, it's irrigated, but we still got water problems, which means we got a lot of standing water. This is kind of a complicated field. We reached out to these guys. They helped us get a tile design made. We kind of jumped into a new purchase, working with Soil Max on that. We went GPS, and it just really works well with design and a layout as complicated as this one. So a lot of people out there don't know what tile is. And Michael, why don't you explain a little bit what we're talking about. The name tile comes from when people used to install with clay. That was one foot sections of clay, whether it was flat bottom all the way to oval, to circular, all sorts of things. So a lot of the industry just still uses the terminology tile. Now, since ADS kind of invented the plastic maxi rolls, we still utilize the same name as tile. So that tile roll behind us actually has small perforations, little holes in it. That allows the excess moisture from your soil profile to percolate through the soil and then get it removed. So to give a better description of what actually drainage does for your ground, think of a wet sponge. Without uh, subsurface drainage, that sponge stays saturated. You get a rain event, there's nowhere for that water to go. When we incorporate drainage, that's essentially saying we're just going to continuously squeeze that sponge. We're just allowing that ground to accept the next rainfall. If the next rainfall happens, that sponge absorbs that moisture and continuously squeezes, just like a heartbeat. It's a controlled release of water, which is important for everyone that doesn't live in the country. When it hits the waterways and stuff, we're doing it at a controlled speed instead of a huge event where you get a flash flood. That's a big deal that really gets overlooked a lot. We're not flooding anybody. Well, in a nutshell, we're taking this plastic tile behind us and we're burying it in the ground and we're going to drain it to an open ditch. We're actually excited to get going. Yeah. One thing we want to discuss today is a service called 811. Brooks can make a call. They're actually going to come out, locate all the underground utilities that might be on this farm. It's a free service. I think it's got about a 48 hour turnaround. They want us to succeed. They don't want anybody hurt at the end of the day. And that's what 811 is all about is don't hit that pipeline. We want everybody to come to work, do their job and, and go home at night and be with their family. Let's go check out the equipment we're going to use. ADS is the largest manufacturer of agricultural drainage products. So there's a few things that we've discussed today that I kind of want to dive into a little bit further. One is these perforations. So that's what allows the actual water to percolate into the tile. It's essentially like you took a razor blade and, and cut it. Uh, it allows the water to enter, but it does not allow the soil particles to get into the tile. Well, in order to get this tile in the ground, we gotta have a machine like this. So Joe, won't you explain to the viewers what we got going on? We start at the very bottom. We have what we call a shear, and that shear is actually gonna shape a three-sided trench. So when that tile comes out the back, we're gonna have a nice support for it, keep it round for, for its entire life. The other thing to mention about the type of plow that we make, it's, it's called a pitch plow, which means we change the depth in the soil profile by changing the angle of this shank in the ground. And then once we get to the back of the plow, here, the tile is actually going to go in through the top of what we call a J, come through here and it's just going to come right back underneath and lay in that trench. The design we've got patented here where this tile exits compared to the other plows is as this makes a grade change with the computer, we don't deflect back here on the ground. So you can actually make a change with the plow going through the field and it doesn't squish the tile or put a hump in it. One of the other options you chose was the power feeder, which is very important to you as a grower, to us as Soil Max and to, and to ADS is we're going to keep that tile pushed right in the top there. We're going to reduce the friction as much as we can because the death of tile is stretch. So when we go back and look at this tile later, all those ribs that ADS provides they're all the, the exact right width and that tile is going to last. One other option that you guys chose on this plow is in GPS satellites that are going to be accurate within an inch. The mechanics of putting the tile on the ground didn't change any, but the ease of figuring out how deep to put it and where to put it have, have really changed. So with that, the only other feature that we've got to talk about is the walking tandems, which is the four wheels instead of two. One thing I noticed with them is just how much smoother it is. Yeah, you get back to the start quicker and the survey is just that much cleaner. So with all that being said, we've looked at the options out here, Brooks. So I think it's about time to jump up in the cab and let's see how this thing works. Yeah, absolutely. All right. 
We're looking at the Ag Leader in Command 1200 display. Ag Leader owns Soil Max. It's a great synergy between those two companies. So what we do is we get to a survey page and we're literally going to drive the line that Brooks is going to install tile on. We're going to push a start button. We're going to push a stop button when we're done. And that will actually tell the computer what the topo of the ground is, where, where the high spots are, where the low spots are. And then after we run this survey here in a few minutes, there's going to be a screen that has uh, four questions on it. And what I like to tell a lot of producers, if you can answer four easy questions, you can literally install tile. Even before Brooks can turn the tractor around, it's, it's going to know if it's going to work or not. So this is telling me that's everything we surveyed. That's the top of the ground, and then this is where your tile is going to be. So we got an interference there. So this is how easy it is. So I had this set at 48 inches. So we surveyed it. It told me there's an interference. It won't let me lay because my check mark's not lit up green. So I can see I need a little more depth at the start of the run. So all I got to do is add a little depth, 55 inches, and I meet all my requirements. So I'm good to start laying now. Survey done, we got our main started. Thank you for all your guys' help. I guess it's Thank time to put some more time on the ground. Let's yep. get to work. Yep. So this is the beginning of the main, and he's checking the depths to make sure I got it deep enough. And then this is where all the water off the field drains to. This is where it ends up at, in the creek here. Well, if Chelsea's here, she'd be like, it's tile time, woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Today at Cardinal Farms, we're putting a little tile on the ground. Gonna make this a better field. The Soil Max plow, it's nice. It pulls a lot easier than our old plow. We used to laser, and now this has the GPS on it. It was easy to learn, and everyone had told us that we would like it better than lasering, and they were definitely right. How this process works, we have to have an outlet at a water source. We can use the GPS and put it in survey mode and just survey it out at a low point in the field from the ditch or pond or whatever. Then we can install it and that's our main. Usually that's bigger pipe, six, eight inch. So after we install the main, the guys, Aiden, Victor, Brian, they all come up and they will dig down and find that main. From there, we use a tap tee and we drill a hole in the side of that eight and we connect smaller tile line to it. It's, it's a four inch line. Aiden's been driving my tile cart, which he, he strings it out along the path. As I come along, the plow has a feeder that kind of pulls it into the plow and underneath the ground. Once we get to the end, Aiden cuts it for me and puts a cap in there and I'm on to put the next one in. Everyone's got their job and move along pretty good with it. Today's 22nd of November. We're getting ready to lay some tile. Got Opie on the mini doing some cut-ins. Got this big bad boy, 0620 quad Case IH, pulling a gold digger, Soil Max tile plow. We're gonna lay some ADS tile. Excited to see how the quad track pulls the tile plow. This is my wingman here, aka Shelby Klein. This is the truck we're picking up all the ladies in. You know, my dad ain't really good at any of this, so he brought two awesome people here to help him tile because, you know, he can't do it, and we're just good at everything, and he's just bad, so. Let's go bail him out, I guess. <laughs> he's so cocky. <laughs> I don't know how Kevin hasn't knocked him out yet. We're doing my favorite job on the whole farm, playing tile. We're gonna put three six inch main outlets because the one we're going, we're gonna put a dry dam in up there. So we'll just have a couple laterals going into this one, going into the dry dam there. But of all the jobs that you do on the farm in our area, this is the only thing basically year in and year out that we know we will get an ROI guaranteed. Since we don't like changing the plow boots all the time, we'll just leave our six inch on and we'll lay our four inch tile. We've never really had a problem with kinking the tile with like laying four inch laterals, even with the six inch boot. The six inch pulls a lot easier than an eight inch tile. So that's kind of why we could just leave it on here like this. Would be nice to have five, six guys down in here doing it. But once we get our mains in and get back in the habit of doing this, two guys can lay quite a bit of tile, especially if you got a big enough horse on the, on 
the front of it where you don't have to hook another tractor to. Kind of why Brooks has so many guys helping them, you know, they probably got to put two or three or four John Deere's on it to do what one red one will. So that's for you, Brandon. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to connect here. You know, we got our outlet there. We, we see going out into the creek, throw some dirt over the top. Right when I first take off, Opie will be down here making sure that the tile don't pull apart. And as soon as we get about five, six feet, then boom, I could take off going. And this top lao, once we get to the end, we'll record on the way back. So we don't have to do no guessing. Everything's GPS done, sub inch accuracy. So the plow does it all by itself. You know, we got some neighbors down here, fantastic farmers that lay more tile than anybody I ever know every year. And we kind of asked them guys for the, some of their advice too. And they always said in the river bottoms in our area, they always wanted, wanted to be at 25 foot centers. They're such fantastic farmers. It's hard to argue with what them guys say. Thank you, Sang boys. We appreciate it. Every year we'll have a few little wet spots down in here that just don't grow anything. Yes, it is kind of expensive to lay tile, but problem is if you plant a field and we get a, a little rain or something, that spot's going to drown out. So it's not only the money we're missing out on zero bushels or 100 bushels where it should have been 200, 250 bushels. It's the input prices too that we had. You know, we planted it with seed corn, we, we sprayed it, we fertilized it, and we're not getting no money back on that too. So it's a pretty big, huge economic economic benefit by t laying tile in your fields for us in our in our southern Indiana areas. Last year, you know, 2022, we had to take prevent plant. You hate to take prevent plant when you got $7 corn. We did it, decided now's a good time to get it tiled. And the game plan is to recoup our investment on a field in two or three years. And then you should have 30 years where this tile should be helping pay for itself. So I hope, I guess I'll get down in there and slap these together and we'll get with it then. You're filming this because you notice Kevin's shovel there. It's got a sticker on it. Probably when he's done, probably thrown over here in a field, and that'll be the only way it ever collects for us is he'll lose it here in about 10 minutes and be looking around for a shovel for a half an hour. Well, that yeah. sticker will be there for a lifetime because he'll never wear it out. That's why I got kids. I just want to get a little bit on it so it don't break to help hold it. Yeah, Brooks ain't getting down trench. All right, so when I take off, you just make sure that there ain't no gap right here. And I'll go ahead and string that tile out and come back, and then we'll be done with the mains. We reached out to ADS about helping our water management in this farm because this farm has always been our last planting farm now. And all we had to do is drop a pen where our field was, sent it to them. They showed up the drawings, had exactly every lateral main that we run. They gave a whole outfit of the drawing, the layout and everything. All we got to do is plug it back into our top plow, ag leader, the software of the, the program for, the, for this field. And all you got to do is just match up and, and drive, follow them lines so there's no guessing. I mean, pretty slick how they could do that now. Thank you, ADS. We're down here on what we call our bear farm. We got Brent and Darla with ADS here. And our philosophy is it's got to start with tile down here in Southern Indiana. From our perspective, tile continues to be one of the most important things on farms, specifically because of what it does for water. Our brand message is our reason is water because that's what we do as a company. We move water. The things that I keep seeing year after year is tiling isn't going anywhere. Brent is, is our salesman. When we got to know him, he went out of his way. When we had a, our big project a couple years ago, work his mind and get her tile. But I think from what I've been talking to him that your business has really taken off. In the past couple of years, it has grown twofold. The farmers maybe don't have the time to do it themselves or the equipment to install it. So our contractors are seeing a very high fluctuation of calls asking for installation. It's that much more important as the market grows, as contractors are getting busier and busier, as farmers are needing to do more with less with the inflationary pressures you guys have and the dollars that are being put into conservation for people to understand that drainage water management is a conservation tactic. Drainage can get a really negative connotation because you think of your 
you're throwing something away. So I now link to, it's not drainage, it's water management. What are you doing with the water on your farm? Making sure not only the farm community, but society understands that by installing tile splitting lines, farmers doing that, it's not only helping them grow more food, but it's also helping them provide clean water. When the tile releases the water, it's doing that after keeping all that nutrients in the soil, getting that better root structure so that the water is going where it should be in a right amount of time. Our soil biology is so much better now because it's it's drier. I have yet to meet a farmer that has installed tile and regretted it. Now the wife may regret it because we have to write out the check and you usually get suckered in to help and cob on the farm. But my thing that I thought was so interesting that we talked about was how you guys develop your tile from the recyclables. The past couple of years, we've been the second largest plastics recycling company in North America, but this year we've moved into the number one spot. It's interesting that we're a plastic pipe company, but we are also recycling more plastic than anybody else on the continent. We recycle a lot of our own product, but because of the amount of recycled content that we try to use, we also have to purchase some of it. We're not just here putting pipe under the ground. We're doing it from a sustainability perspective, from a resiliency perspective, because the world can't go on financially, economically, as good as we would want it to without these types of things. So ADS is very, very invested in making sure that we're doing more with less. We're helping the environment, we're helping sustain and manage water, the world's most precious resource. Because without it, none of us can survive. We're helping ourselves and I think all farmers can help themselves by installing ADS top. Just don't ask your wife to help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs>